progress. All right. So hello and welcome to season three, lesson five of Learn German Three Music. We're gonna be talking about Mother's Day and Father's Day in Germany and Austria today. And so I wanna welcome, <laughs> welcome my two favorite people in the world. Uh, we're actually on camera today. Uh, say hi, introduce yourselves. Hi. Hi, <laughs> well, I'm Melissa and this is my wonderful husband, Robert. And together we have the Haunted Tales podcast. So we have, it's a weekly horror fiction podcast available wherever you listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. whole commercial spiel. Yeah. Uh, we're Austrian, so we're going to talk about Mother's Day and Father's Day as they celebrate it here. Uh -huh. And yeah. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode. I really appreciate it. Um, just need to make a little correction from the last episode. Apparently, I accidentally uh, included the plural for the word gene. Um, so apologize for that. Uh, the word is gain, not gaina. Gaina is plural. And just another reminder that we are now exclusively on YouTube. Uh, Spotify locked us out of our accounts, and I don't want to go through the trouble to try to get that turned back on again. So we're just going to go on and continue as a YouTube channel, I suppose. The song today is by a band out of Berlin called Berlin Boom Orchestra. And the song that we're going to be listening to is Du bist noch so ungewiss. And we're doing that because we're talking about Mother's and Father's Day in Germany and Austria. Uh, apparently today is Father's Day. Uh, we're recording this on May 9th. So that's Father's Day and Mother's Day is May 12th, which is a little bit different than here in America because I believe Father's Day isn't until next month here. But uh, how about you guys tell us a little bit about how that looks um, in Austria? Like, what do you guys do for your parents? Well, Father's Day in Austria isn't actually today. Yep. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's not today? June. Yes, in Germany oh, it is. Okay. In Germany it is. Mother's Day is in both Austria and Germany on Sunday. So that's the 12th. The 12th, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and in general, uh, especially for Mother's Day, uh, most of the time, most people just go to a kef cafe or you give a small gift to your mother or your wife if she, you've got kids. Um, most of the time, something simple like flowers, a bouquet of roses, something like that. And in school, we always had to do crafts, of course. Mm -hmm. I remember, let's just say, I think it's it's a thing that people younger than me will think is very weird, but for every Father's Day in school, we made an ashtray. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> it's not, not something that, that's probably the best idea, but mm -hmm. you no, know, for Mother's Day and Father's Day, typically you make small themed gifts that are mm -hmm. very stereotypical, even to this day. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing when you look around shops and stuff on Mother's Day. Typically, uh, things like flowers and chocolates and baked goods and stuff will be promoted and on sale. And for Father's Day, it's beer and tools. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, do you guys also have the tradition of uh, fathers going off in the woods carrying a wagon of beer like they do in, I'm told they do in Germany? Apparently, this is a thing in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is. Uh, no, not that. I don't think my father has ever done that. Uh, but some people somewhere might. I know it's a thing in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, but here, that's one of those things. Father's Day in general is a little bit less known or less prominent in the media mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And because Mother's Day has turned into kind of like Valentine's Day, a very commercial thing. So mm -hmm. my sister, um, she's a trained florist. 
So she used to work in a flower shop. And Mother's Day was one of those days where Mother's Day is on a Sunday. And in Austria and Germany, um, stores are closed on Sundays. But the Saturday before that, that would be one of the most stressful days of the year. Mm -hmm. Because so many people will come come in and buy flowers for their wife or their mother. And it's a big enough thing that the price of flowers would go up like drastically, mm -hmm. especially anything that was on trend that year or in general, just red roses. And uh, so, yeah, if you, if you ask her about it, she'll rant at you for like half an hour about <laughs> how expensive the suppliers are making the flowers and mm -hmm. the customers that are buying the flowers don't get it, but it is a thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's mostly just an excuse to give a gift mm -hmm. these days, I think. So it sounds like in Austria, it's a little more like here in America where Father's Day isn't nearly as sort of celebrated, at least not commercially, as Mother's Day. Mother's Day is kind of the big one and Father's Day is sort of secondary and it's tools and ashtrays here too, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although my, my dad always wanted some kind of duck. <laughs> he collected <Okay>. ducks. <laughs> ducks were his thing. All right. Anything yeah, else to add to that? Oh, is there anything? I remember my, because my dad used to smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember we had kids in our class whose dads did not smoke. Mm -hmm. So instead of an ashtray, it was a key holder. Mm -hmm. You know, like a little bowl you put out next to your door to store your keys in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I personally, I would always make some sort of little crafty thing. For my mom, it would often be like things like origami flowers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And some people like I, because I was very close with my grandma also. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived in the same house, my parents and grandparents. So for Mother's Day and Father's Day and stuff, I would make basically one bigger gift for my mom and then like a smaller one for my grandma. So I'd make like a bouquet of origami flowers for my mom and then a single flower for my grandma. That's nice. also sometimes a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't have anything to add. Uh, we never made any gifts in school because the schools I went to weren't really crafty, <laughs> Let, let's call it that. And I'm completely incapable of, of doing anything with my two hands. It would resemble anything useful. <laughs> so I only bought chocolate and yeah, chocolate mostly, I think. Chocolate yeah, but chocolate is nice. Good. Everybody likes chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if that's uh, that's kind of it for that, I can't think of anything else. Thanks so much for talking about that. Um, I guess we'll get on to the band information and then on to the, the song. Um, so what I have here, I just usually read the Wikipedia stuff. Berlin Boom Orchestra was formed in early 2006 in Berlin. Some members came from the Berlin ska band Squawk Quadrat, which broke up in 2005. Having gotten their start playing Club Kato in Kreuzberg, they blew up to become one of the most loved German-speaking ska bands playing all over Germany. This is according to their Wikipedia, not to me. <laughs> Um, at the European Reggae Contest in 2009, the band reached first place uh, in the German finale, and in 2010, they received first prize for Best Reggae Band and Best Reggae Album from the Deutschen Popstiftung, or German Pop Foundation, which uh, apparently is a foundation for the promotion for cultural purposes of the interest of rock and pop musicians in Germany. This is fulfilled through support measures in the field of art and culture of rock and pop musicians. 
The German Pop Foundation supports outstanding artists and provides support in the field of further education through mutual information, coordinating efforts, and exchange of experience, as well as the representation of common interests towards the public and the responsible authorities in the field of art and culture of rock and pop music. Uh, goes on further to say in 2015, the band released its third studio album, Kopfstein Pflaster. Their fourth album, Reggae Punks, came out in 2019. A uh, Berlin Boom Orchestra often speaks out about political themes in their song text and in interviews. The band speaks out actively against homophobia and sexism and supports the campaign called Make Some Noise sexism and homophobia out of my music that seeks to offer an alternative to the homophobic sexist mainstream in the music industry. They also frequently speak out about the situation of refugees and asylum seekers in Europe in such songs as Nine Man and Rise of Fieber and Murder, and they have frequently played at charity events for refugee humanitarian efforts. The band also frequently writes songs about how society deals with national socialism, and the band has played at countless rallies against right-wing violence. For the band, dealing with the history of national socialism includes confronting anti-Semitism outside of the neo-Nazi scene, including the Middle East conflict, which is a big topic these days. And the band has four albums and three EPs to date. Um, so I picked this song because um, I think it's probably one of the most heartfelt, beautiful, tear-wrenching songs I have ever heard uh, from an expectant parent. Um, I think it's just gorgeous, and I hope everybody else will agree. Um, so I guess here it is for the first time today, the video for Du bist noch so ungewiss from Berlin Boom Orchestra. My cat's attacking me. We'll be back right after the video. <laughs> <laughs> 